G'day and welcome to Hogs, Cogs and all these flogs coming to you live from the Rutherglen Rumble. Oh, fucking come on. <laughs> We're coming to you live from Rubber Glen at the Rubber Glen Rumble and uh, I'm looking down there mate, there is plenty of bikes lined up. We got trucks, cars and bikes, but we're here for the bikes. Tattoo show. We're definitely here for the tattoo show. We're here for the tattoo show. I'm covered in it, look. The flogs are, the flogs are gonna be uh, represented in uh, the bikes and... John, you go on the tattoo the show? You go on the tattoo show? I'm all covered, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's putting his uh, tramp stamp in. Elaine, uh, got a tattoo show? <laughs> yeah, look at that. My look at sleeve. Yep, yep. Right here, mate, so we're at the Rutherglen Rumble, and I've got to mate. say, I'm slightly disappointed in the motorcycling community. Yep. Uh, I mean, there's a few bikes here, but what is it, uh, um, guys? Are we, we, like, we've had a shit week weather-wise, I guess, and, and maybe that's driven a few off. But you know, it's these bikes, it's beautiful day. It's, it's probably as good a day as you could ask for, mate. <laughs> and the thing is, is you know, these bikes have spent hours and hundreds of hours organised and money and for someone to say they're coming and then turn around and not turn up because you know it may rain or it may drizzle i think that's a bit of a poor effort myself mate because uh what will happen is the, the organisers will eventually say well screw it if yeah. they're not interested we're not interested next minute that we're another we're another showdown and we don't want that i just think as a, as a as a biking community it's incumbent upon us to turn up to these things yeah uh now i can understand if it was yeah, it was torrential okay you might give it a miss but geez if it's going to be a shower i mean we're not the wicked witch of the west we're not going to melt <laughs> it's not pathetic <laughs> it's just i don't know mate today you couldn't have asked for a more perfect day yeah and uh you know i think people do themselves an injustice by missing out on things because they make their mind up two days before oh, it's going to be wet well you know what the weather bureau can't tell us what the weather is right now yeah i, I swear they don't have a window in their <laughs> office mate i think we should do a gofundme for them we should put a window in there and uh you know if there's a bike show on get along to it because if you don't the next thing is we ain't got none exactly right and uh, i tell you what while we're here mate we're going to take a look at some of these bikes because they are, there are some very pretty ones and some very pretty ones that belong to flogs that yes. are definitely <laughs> Definitely in the running for some of the main prizes here, so that's going to be cool as. And uh, fingers crossed for the flogs, mate. Yep, let's go have a look at them. Rightio, Gail. So you're here on this magnificent, uh, what do you call it, Gypsy Rose, yeah? Wild Rose. Wild Rose. Wild Rose. Who's the girl? Written on the side, Paul. Get it right, mate. <laughs> so what have we had done to this beautiful beast? What haven't we had done? Full custom paint from my son, hand painted by Jules in pinstriping, engraved by Ash. Yeah. And we've had, what else have we done? The brass little accents we've done. Um, Barnon Motor, Sean, he has handmade my sissy bar to match my paintwork. Um, yeah, a lot of people put a lot of love into this bike, and I love her, and she represents me. Now, what did it, what did it start life as? Oh, a boring black sportster. <laughs> <laughs> I literally bought her, yep. paid for her, she went off on a truck, and then I got her back. It was the week of the bit close, and I received her back on the Wednesday, Thursday night, we were still putting parts on her, and my first ride on her was the big for Aussie Nationals. Big for the Nationals in uh, December, in where December. you walked away first week that it was in existence <laughs> with a first prize for the car park. 
you should have had. Well, it's not a Vickler, so it couldn't have won the Vicklers. But for the prize for the best bike in the car park, it won, and uh, well deserved, Dale. It was, it was definitely, it was a killer bike in the car park. It, it was a hell of an, a, a hell of an entry for it into the scene, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was. It was. That was her grand opening, and she made an opening. And she's been published in Heavy Duty. She's been published in Live to Ride. Um, she's got a lot of attention and she well deserves it because it's a really, personally, she's a really good bike. But I'm going to show you something that I'm sitting on because I forgot to mention them. Yep. Full leather emboss by SP Motos seats. Go away. So. <laughs> How comfortable is she to ride? Because you ride this everywhere, don't you? I do ride you this see, everywhere. If this ain't a looker, this is a goer. So. Yeah, she's awesome to ride. She's got a lot of power under her. And yeah, I like to give the boys a run for their money when we're out on the road. And that's my other bike, which somebody else will talk about. But compare the two, two totally different rides, but so much fun on them both. Now, some of you might have noticed Gail's got a couple of tattoos, um, so you're going. She's to only got one. <laughs> you're going to the tattoo competition as well. Oh, I'm going into the tattoo competition, and yeah, let's see what we're doing now. Yep. Well, you're here representing the flogs. Oh yeah. So I'll represent you guys <laughs> on the <this> family show because <laughs> you may have to put scented. <laughs> we'll just put the little there. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, I'm not shy coming forward. So <laughs> my ink is like my bike; it's there to be seen. Yep. Cool. Well, I tell you what. Good luck with the bike. Good luck with the tattoo contest. Go flogs. <laughs> Go. Right, yeah, so we're here with Reese. Now you would have seen Reese on Hogs, Cogs, and Two Aussie Flogs once before because he used to have a Vickler, but he's gone to the complete. Like, as we know, the, the bagger thing is it's coming up big in Australia. A lot of people doing it. He's and gone crazy. He's gone crazy. He's got absolutely <laughs> nuts on this bagger. So, what do you got here, mate? Uh, this is my 22 Road Glide ST, and uh, it's like the full works. So, gone the full performance bagger theme. Yep. And uh, look, not a heap of engine work, like basically a, a stage two with a bit of work there and a dyno tune from Brian at EBT. And then the rest is just all the aesthetics that go with it. So a lot of carbon, um, giving the bike a bit of a diet, get it as nimble as I can. Wait a sec, you say you're giving it a little bit of a diet. Yeah. The average uh, rear fender weighs, what did you say, seven kilos? It's about seven kilo, yeah. Your carbon rear fender weighs? <laughs> 800 grams. <laughs> That's a fair diet, mate. Yeah, yeah. Shit, if, yeah. I wish we could buddy. Uh, <laughs> If it was that easy, yeah, yeah. I'd be doing it as well. So. <laughs> that's, no, that's, um, a, that's a wicked saving, though. It is. It is. I mean, it's noticeable. It, yeah. I mean, you've also got the side plates and. Yep. Yeah. What yeah. else have we got happening? So it's like full carbon mullet. Um, so over to the front fender as well. There was a big saving there as well, being a steel one on the original. And then uh, all the thrash and supply gear. So bars, risers. Um, so it's all hidden because I kept. I liked the standard gauge. I didn't want to do a gauge relocation. Right. Um, there's just like there's a lot that needs to be done. If you're going to do that properly, hiding wires through the neck and stuff like that. So I just left that. Um, Alan Ness front end. So it's a method. Uh, no flex fork legs. Um, big brake kit, which is like 14 inch rotor. Standard wheels. Standard tyres. Um, and then a heaps of custom dynamics lighting and a hog light. Headlights. Yeah, so. you like the hog light? Fantastic. It's awesome, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's we're, super well, We've got them on ours now, and uh, yeah, brilliant at night. Yeah. And suspension, what are you going with the suspension? Uh, rear suspension is screaming in little O-Lings, so just basically factory Harley stuff. And then the front, I've got Legends. Um, they're not super adjustable, but they're good for what I want, and uh, they'll, you know, outdo my riding skills by far. So. <laughs> 
Mate, she is an absolutely wicked looking unit. Yeah, thanks guys. Have Thank you got you right. the goods to be able to uh, get the most out of her? Yeah, well that's <laughs> uh, separate bank accounts to the missus, so I tell you can get away with it. <laughs> well, she's an absolute gorgeous bike, as was your Vickler, so... Uh, oh, thank you very much. Yes. Any other plans nice. for it? Uh, no, look, I've got I've got a few little niche things I've put on, like I've got a shift light there and a quick shift prepared, so I'm going to put it down the strip soon. Yep. And uh, sort of give it a bit of a run there, have a bit of fun. And then, uh, other than that, look, I'll just ride it as I do, and if it blows up, we'll put a 128 in it. And <laughs> So we'll see, but no, nothing. At this stage, I'm pretty happy with where it is right now. And if I spoke just, like uh, that around the tail gunner, mate, that'd be the end of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, just ride the bike. I'll tell you what I really do like. I love your crash bar at the front. Yeah, so Where does that come from? That's a brand new. So that's a 24 release crash bar. Yeah. So it's coming on the new CBOSTs for oh, okay. 24. Um, but they do fit some of the earlier models. Yeah. So if you, there's a bit of interchangeable um, yeah. parts in there, yeah, a but bit not different everything. from the standard sort of uh, yeah. angel wings. Sort of I, job, I did have a, a full size on it, yep. and like soft lowers for winter and that. Um, but now I've got a really good weather setup. I went, I went back to the aesthetics of a performance bagger style, yeah. and that sort of club style crash yeah. bar just looks a lot better. Yeah, I love it, and the uh, gold accent on the uh, on the motor looks fantastic as well. So uh, yeah. she's a good looking unit, my friend. Thank you very much. And the matching helmet. Yeah, and the oh, matching well, helmet. Must, yeah. must carbon, have. carbon gold helmet. So. <laughs> well, mate, oh, it looks fantastic. Keep yep. us updated with anything else you do to it because it looks fantastic. We'll get it up on the show, so it looks looks absolutely brilliant. Make sure you give him a bit of a like for that. Uh, don't let him know in the comments how much you like his bike because I reckon it looks absolutely fantastic. That's the way we're going in Australia at the moment is we're going, everybody's going that whole performance bagger look. So. Road glide performance bagger. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just gone completely new school to old school. So, mate, what is this beast you got here? Uh, that's a 1965 electric glide. Pan, uh, panhead? Yeah, panhead. Yep. How, how long you had that for? Uh, about 18 months now, yeah. It is yep. an absolute beautiful condition. <laughs> yeah, no, nice I, I was lucky bags. lucky to pick it up, yeah. No. Absolutely yep. beautiful. So, yeah. so have you got? If you only got the old bike, you got new bikes as well? or? No, I just got old Old bikes? Yeah. So what is, now, I'm, I'm an old school guy as everybody knows, what do you, what is it about the old school bikes that just floats your boat? Oh, just the old school, just yeah. what I like, everyone to their own mate, yeah. everyone to their own. Yeah. Yeah. They've and, got character haven't they? Yeah, mate, you yeah. know, the, the, the older the bike, I, I find it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, I love old school Harleys, but yeah. also like old school English bikes, you know, yeah. I mean, they just, the mechanics of them is as cool as all hell. I yeah. love them. And the Panhead, that is a pretty motor. You know, well, I reckon yeah. the Panhead is, uh, it's, it's pretty it's much very, my very favourite. Pretty motor, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think the Panhead might be my favourite. It's a very pretty motor. Very yeah. nice. So, any plans to do anything to it, or just no, going to keep it, it completely that's it. stock? Stock, that's it. Yeah. And was it like this when you picked it up? Yeah, it was, yeah. Wow, yeah. beautiful condition. Yeah, the bloke that had it, um, yeah, he didn't touch it. So, is it a looker or a cooker, mate? You ride it? Yeah, I ride it. It gets yeah. ridden properly? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Yep. And have, have you any problems with it, like, no. as far as reliability and all that sort of stuff? No, no, no. No, no she, well, she's good. What about parts? Good. Finding parts for it, an issue nowadays, or...? Well, not if you know the right blokes. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I've learned is all the blokes that ride these things, they all know the right blokes. That is pretty motor. So we've got this 47 knuckle here, mate. What do you reckon? Mate, talk about old school. Christ, and uh, maybe I was wrong. I love the panties, mate, but the knuckle is... Next that, level? Yeah, that is that is pretty cool too. Now this one is that's, that's, very old school, that's mate. Farm it's fresh. Not, not a lot of it is farm <laughs> fresh. It's not a lot of work by the looks of it externally being done to yeah. it. But uh, they they assure us that it runs all right. And it smells uh, fantastic. It, it does, doesn't it? That it has smell that, of oil. <laughs> that smell of burning oil. Is, that is a pretty looking bike, mate. And, and have a look at the chain around the bloody uh, around the footboard, mate. How cool is that? Yep. I like all the little things, mate. It's, it's it's just the mechanical look of it, you know. Like new school bikes are great, but they're in comparison bland as far as yeah. I'm concerned. I mean, this just looks like a, a working piece of machinery from the you know from the start of the industrial revolution. Yeah. Sort of, it is just, I love it. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. I'm oh, kill, kill for one, mate. And I reckon the, the peg on the mirror is a good touch. Hey, very important. Very important. That's very important. That's all about balance, mate. All about balance. <laughs> well, hey. what happens is you, you can you can hang your hanky out if you had a, if you got a big flu. Yeah, that that. <laughs> well, you know, we've, we've had COVID, we've had all those sorts of things, mate. So you got to you got to take your shit in your Radio. Radio. So talk about old school. We got a 49 EL here. Nah, it's 
Van Head? 57 heads. 57 heads? Say 57 head. 57 head. Yeah. Be nice to score that, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Another one of the one of our flogs is actually. Well, entered, this is a serious flog. It's a serious <laughs> flog. Has entered her uh, magnificent-looking beast into this uh, into this motorcycle uh, show. Show. And so, what did this start off as? Because yes. we yes. reveal it in a minute. But what, what was it when you first got it? Well, just a, a stock um, heritage 2015. Um, yeah, it's a 103. Yep. Um, I've actually. Had a stage two put in it. See, I'm talking the talk, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. Nice so, shit. yeah. <laughs> but um, I think, and uh, some fishtails, and uh, I've just sort of made it mine. Yeah. Now, now, so, so you, what you've, what, so essentially, what you've done is you've, you've discarded poor old Reg. Yes. Like, yeah, all the gets, fun, all the gets, funds have gone into this. <laughs> he gets the spare parts. You, you polish the bikes. Yes. You do yours better than his. I do. So there's a theme happening here, guys. <laughs> there's a different theme. So what have you put on it so far? Um, so so far, what have I, I've put uh, actually the hog lights, obviously, yep, yep. and uh, fish tails. Yep. Um, I've actually uh, Mustang um, solo seat. Yep. Uh, the, um, the tail guard. Is it the fender guard? Yes. And the, uh, and the rack. Um, the headlight, the uh, indicators. Swap yep. them out. So you went the, the, so that the. Uh, the Reaper tips and the, and the indicator lenses you would have got from Charlie? Yes, from, um, yes I did. They're Custom freedom. Craft. Yes, craft. absolutely. Um, we put some uh, rails on the front and rear um, of the guards. So I'm just trying to think what else I've got. Oh, obviously my uh, lovely... Um, All the leather work. Tank work, yeah. Yep. Uh, and and, and your tank bra? Yes, and my tank bra. She likes a leather bra. She does. <laughs> Now, now for those of you who don't know, the, 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 Reg and Mandy would ride more miles or more kilometres than I've ever Pretty seen. Pretty much anyone I know. Anybody that I know. Uh, <laughs> you look at them on Facebook today, they're in Tasmania and they go, oh, we just got back from Tassie, uh, we're now in Bright. <laughs> yeah. We've gone from Bright to we Myrtleford, we've we gone do. all over the place. Uh, we went to um, went to Lake Sedgwick for tea. Yeah. And then rode home. Who goes to Lake Sedgwick for tea? And we're not talking from down the road here, mate, from no. Warrigal. We're no, talking, we don't. Uh, from Corowa. Yes. So what, what's that about five hours, I think? Four and a half hours? Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's sometimes right. you get hungry, don't that's you? That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, no, we uh, we do that. We actually went over to Marimbula for lunch once. Um, but we did stop over to our friends at Ginderbine. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Yeah, so any excuse for a ride, we'll do it. Absolutely fantastic. So, so how many k's has this got on it? So this one now has got 55, I think. 58,000. 50, so this is my, look, just to be honest, this is probably my third bike. I had to get one that suits me. Right. Um, so I've, all in all, I've done over 110,000 k's in three years. So for all the girls out there, how old were you when you got your license? You never seen a good answer. 59. <laughs> so, so you're getting your license I'd next year, <laughs> clearly unlicensed. I'd never been on a boat before. I'd never been on a boat At before. 59. Uh, 59, I've got my L's. Yep. Um, and was on those. And now you're doing how months. many Ks a year? Yes, well, yeah. 30, 40,000 a year. Uh, two more, more than I've ever figured out. Yeah, lost time. Yeah. So, well, I reckon that's just absolutely amazing. Yep. 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 Shows that anyone can do it. You've just yep. got to. Uh, Get off the couch. Get mate. off the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing feeling. Well, yeah. good luck with this competition because yeah. the bike looks fantastic. Thank yeah. you, Paul. It is pretty. Lovely. Done a great job. Thank you. 
So we're here with Danny. Danny, who's bike entered into the competition as well. Now, what is this? It's obviously a shovel. Yeah, it's a 73 FLH, yep. 1200. Um, it was imported into the country similar to this, like it had mag wheels on it. Um, I bought it off the guy that actually imported it and he registered it, so it was all good done to go. for me, good to go. I've just done a few other little things to it, like different seat, the handlebars, redid the engine. The engine's now, well, it was 1200, it's an 80 cube top end on it. Uh, it's got a solid cam in it, goes all right for an old girl, but Mate, you know. It yeah. is beautiful. But as you can see, typical shovel, like there should be a trophy for the best oil league, I reckon, amongst, <laughs> the, amongst the shovels, you know, but um, yeah. But no, no, look, it's, um, it starts every kick, you know, or well, there's no kick, actually, every time you push the button, and um, yeah, what more could you want? Yeah. So, do you, do, you have a, do you have a newer bike as well? Or yeah, I've got, got a newer bike, I've got a 2009 electric glide. Right, so uh, what what is it about the older girls that float your boat? Well, they're just, like, compared to a bigger bike like an electric glide, yep. you can actually throw these little things around in traffic, split lanes, yep. and that a lot. But just, you know, and, and just the, the feeling of them, like the vibration of them is just so much different to so these rubber mounted things. And I, 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 yeah. I, I've got to agree with you, it's something yeah. about it, I, it's, it's, it's hard to define exactly what it is, mm. but it's just the feeling you get when you mm. get on one, they're not quick by any stretch of no, the imagination, no, no. but they are just friggin' enjoyable. Yeah, yeah like, uh, they're, not, they're not fun on a long trip either, no. that's one thing for sure, you know. <laughs> the electric glide, like the O9, they could ride that thousand k's and get off and walk, but yep. this thing here, after a hundred k's, you you know you're back screaming. Yeah. Yeah. You know you're looking for you're part, looking for a bed. But that's part of the joy. Isn't <laughs> it's, 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 it is. It is a part of the joy. Yeah. Well, well mate, it's yeah. an absolute freaking yeah. lovely machine, and, and uh, more power to you. I reckon it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Good no, luck I with like it. it. I, I, don't, I don't think I'll be getting rid of it soon. I can. No. Tell you I can hang yeah. on to it now for sure. Yeah. yeah good on you. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. So with Nick from Caffeine and Machine. Hey, going, buddy. Good mate, and organizer of this magnificent event. Happy yep. this year. Really happy. Would have loved to see a few more bikes in the hall, but it is what it is. And the weather yesterday would have told anyone, don't get a bike out. Yeah. But, like, incredible, incredible. Oh, again. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, what we say, like, I reckon we've raised probably 15 grand through through everything. So, to me, that's um, phenomenal. How good Absol is that? Uh, mate, How brilliant. Good is that? Absolutely brilliant. Uh, again, fantastically run. It's fantastic for the town. Anybody that's been up here this year, get up here next year. It's book it because you, you won't get a room. You yeah. just announced, didn't you, the weekend after Easter next year? Yeah. Yep. Right, weekend after Easter next year, we're doing the flogs run up here. Get yourselves up here with us. It's going to be a ripper weekend. How many, how many people did you get through this year? Do you reckon? Thousands. It was amazing. I reckon two or three thousand again. Yeah, absolutely brilliant, mate. Huge. More credit to you. Done Great well. Again, Thanks really well. well. Um, we'll see you again. No, Thank you, time, mate. Catch you. Well, my angle was that. It was a fantastic weekend oh, again. Oh, what a ripper weekend, mate. I tell you what, not just the Rubble Den Rumble itself, but just the, you know, I mean, this, this community around Hogs Cogs yeah. is building really well, mate. We took, what was the 15 of us or something up there in total? Yeah, yeah. You know, even uh, Dave and Ange came up the, Dave yeah. the detailer. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people that knew. Uh, the, the, Dave and the, Ange, the, they're flogs now, mate. They are flogs. They can't, they can't, can't escape it. On there the was road. quite a few flogs on show up there as well. There was. Um, some, so, some flogs had more to show than others. They, they did. <laughs> they did definitely. Um, but it was look. It's it's a great weekend. Not just the the, the, the Rutherglen Glen Rumble and and just that whole area up there is fantastic. I mean, we went and look at oh. um, at Coral and that. Which how, cool. how pretty is Coral? It's mate. a ripper joint. That was a ripper joint. We're, we're going to get back up there. Have a look at Coral yeah, like, itself and at all that area. I didn't realise, I actually had no idea that Rubber Glen was only like, I don't know, less ten, than 10 minutes from the border. Yeah, it's close. And I, I, somehow, I've never been to Coral. I don't know how. I've been everywhere no, else. I'm, I'm the same, I, know, I must have missed it somehow. But, um, well, the Rumble itself, I thought it was fantastic. Again, I, they, they lucked out with the weather on, on the Saturday. Yeah, I, I think the weather all week. And, and you know what? I think it was the prediction of the weather. Yeah. And, and then... It actually didn't eventuate. It was an absolute ripper day weather wise. And this is why <laughs> don't take notice of the difference yeah. in the bloody Bureau of Meteorology, mate. I don't think they've got a window. No, because they, they they predicted Armageddon. Yeah. Uh and Armageddon a good good day out. Yeah, it was it was it was fine. I mean the, we had a bit of rain on the Friday night. Yeah. It rained overnight. By the time we got up in the morning, it, it was, was dry. And it's dry it was stopped. But yep. we went straight down to the showgrounds yep. to see what it was like. It was Heaps of grass as it was dry. The only unfortunate thing was they had their uh, 
uh, swap meet day and uh, just everybody pulled the pin, which yeah, was very unfortunate. Yeah, that was. Um, and they, they put a lot of effort in, mate, to uh, making this thing work, you know, and for it to fall flat, but, you know, that, that day especially. Yeah, I just think, uh, I, yeah, because I, I, people just wouldn't didn't turn up, and they they, they said that we'll put them all inside. Yeah. So anyway, um, I just think it's, it's it's a little bit disappointing, um, and like like um, uh, Nick said, you know, the, the, the bikes were down uh, on, on numbers, which is a little bit disappointing. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I, we, we, you know, part of riding is weather. <laughs> you just got to. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. The, Talk it, about it's part, just water. <laughs> talk about part of riding, mate. Mm. One of our flogs, Hoggy. Yes, didn't oh. he have a <laughs> didn't he have a hell of a weekend? So, so Hoggy's decided he's going to enter his um, Norton. Norton, Norton, my friend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he says I'm going to enter my Norton in the best European, I think it was, and and best he, British. And he got about what halfway there. He, he got to just before Beechworth, I think the, it was the, Nor- the Norton. Crapped itself. Yeah. So he gets... No, uh, it's worse than that. Yeah. Because I think it was his son, son spent, I don't know how much time uh, polishing it. Yeah. It was, it was like... It was pristine, pristine. But it didn't make it to the event. No. So they take that aim. Yep. Bugger it, he says, I'll go with round number two. I'll take the Triumph. And the Triumph went a lot further than the, uh, the Norton. One kilometre. One kilometre. <laughs> <laughs> The poor part. So uh, Hoggy finally made it there on his soft tail. There was there was a there was a mushroom cloud over in the direction of Beechworth. Could you imagine? Them, <laughs> eh? Now Hoggy's, as we all know, such a calm, shy, retiring type. <laughs> he got there, mate. He got there, and of course his brother had already told me what's going on. And I've seen him and I've made a beeline to Hoggy. And he's just looked at me, he says, and you can air fry. <laughs> it's hilarious. And what made it worse was they were, annou- they were announcing the, uh, oh, they were the, annou- the, the winner. winner of, the winner of the best European and it went to a can am Because it was the only European vehicle in the Well, it won fair and square. <laughs> He got beat by a can am oh. oh my god, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, I, oh, I could laugh. I actually I actually mentioned I looked at Gary oh. and Gary just shook his head. Just Gary just head. shook his head. Which, Gary's hockey's brother, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, how much how funny was that? Oh, that was very uh, funny. Uh, very but funny. I tell you what, Hoggy puts in up there, mate. He does. He does. Very and, much so. uh, uh, we're thinking of your hoggy because I know he went home the next day, and uh, I think it co- took him about fifteen minutes to fix both of them. Yeah, there was nothing. So it was it was just you know little things that went by the wayside. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's life, mate. <laughs> that is life. But it was it was uh, like I said, it was a, a great you know, Nick at Caffeine Machine does a fantastic job every year. Yeah. Uh, we spend a fair bit of time at Caffeine Machine uh, eating the local yeah. produce and and. Mate, what didn't we eat that weekend? Yeah, it was... Oh, my God. I'll tell you what, what I was. I was a little disappointed in the new Victoria Hotel up there. Yeah. Um, if you're going up there and you want a nice, pretentious meal at a hefty price, you can go to the Victoria Hotel. But apart from that, may I'll stick with the uh, Poacher's Paradise and the... Uh, yeah, look, the, the star. They've done, they spent a truckload of money on there, but yeah. I just, I just, it was just... <laughs> we tried to get... Fifteen people in there, and they, oh, no. they, they didn't. They weren't, weren't interested. They weren't interested. They didn't want to take a booking, <laughs> okay. and uh, look, maybe we got unlucky, but uh, we tried, and they, they, yeah. Anyway, there's plenty of other places to yep. wait up there, mate. And yep. uh, the thing is, is because we went up there with a big group of flogs, we had a hell of a good time. It was brilliant. It was good. So, so if you haven't been, guys, please come up next year. It is weekend just after weekend after Easter next year. They've already announced. So and, and, and our, our very one of our very own flogs uh, took out the tattoo competition. Gail took out Gail. the best in show. Yes, Jay, yeah. I'm sitting there, mate, because she she entered basically everything: <laughs> arms, <laughs> legs, chest, back, forehead, all, <laughs> everything. Yep. And they were reading out all these winners. I thought, oh, for God's sake, she's put a big effort in here, right? She, you know. Anyway, the last one they announced: best in show. Yep. Saved the best till last. And Gail jumped up, and there she goes. She's got the uh, best in show, mate. And we'll, we'll put some video up here. Yeah, and her bike, Wild Rose, which uh, if you haven't seen, is a magnificent looking sports. Though, yep. got best paint. Yep. So she took away two trophies. She cleaned up. She did. 
cleaned up. Andy. And uh, yeah, so, so it was uh, great to see one of the flogs um, yep. get, getting it. Uh, and, and it was what was really good to see was a big group of flogs out the front of the, uh, the the whole thing while it was going on, giving her a big cheer along and yep. uh, getting right into it, mate. So uh, it was fantastic, great weekend. And I, look, I think out of it too. I think they're going to they're going to do. Now, I don't know much about trucks, but uh, they're going to do a, a legends truck show or something, which I think it's got to do with Kenworth. Yeah, it's trucks. Uh, yeah. I don't really know about it, but look, <laughs> yeah, if more. Yeah, the more things that happen in these in these country towns, the, the, the better for us, better off it is for the town. Yeah, um, which is what we're all about, and it was great. Well, to I just sp- don't think I, I think Nick is just hyperactive, and he had to find something else to do as well. <laughs> like I mean, the guy just puts in, doesn't he? Oh, he's, he, he's, yeah, he's, he needs, he's, needs to try a bit harder. <laughs> Mate, the guy's next level. The guy's next level. Fantastic. So, and uh, we spoke to him after the event, and uh, he was bouncing off the walls, mate. He was on a big high because it, it, it went down real well on the Sunday, at least. Yeah, well, like I said, I think they raised $15,000, $15, yeah. which goes to Gateway Health and... and it's three uh, different organisations yeah. they put it to, so yeah. which was really good. So it'd be so, five around each. Yep, they shoot it around. That's fantastic. All right, mate. Now, last fortnight... Yep. We announced a new competition, and uh, I already spoke to a couple of blokes who said they're already at hard at work. So if you weren't watching the last episode, hey, why weren't you? Are they uh, flogs? They are flogs. They will, there's no way known any of those flogs would be hard at work. Or let me well, that's you. true. <laughs> <laughs> they might, may say they're hard yeah, at work. they might say. They'll be looking at bikes. What's work? Yes. They'll be, they'll be scrolling through, <laughs> they'll be scrolling through, through bike sales. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the, the competition is this, is we want to know what your best or, or your ideal two-week motorcycle trip would be. In Australia, if yep. you're in Australia, New Zealand, if you're, if you're in New Zealand, 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 America, if you're in America, if you're in Tasmania, yep, yeah. uh, ask the head beside you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So a lot of <laughs> a lot of people are gonna pick Tasmania, I, I, I predict, mate. Yep. And uh, two weeks probably still wouldn't be enough for that little island because no. it's a ripper joint. But yeah. anyway, get to us your idea of your best two-week tour, wherever it may be. I know you've mentioned the Outback. Mm-hmm. Um, Darwin. 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 Mm. Okay. And then the gang back. Oh, that'd be interesting, mate. Mm. That would be very interesting. All right, so get us your two-week. We need to know where you're going. Yep. What time of year you go, what you're expecting to see, where you're expecting to stay, all those sorts of things. Basically, design a tour... And I'll tell you what, mate, the winner, if possible at some stage, we might have to consider giving it a crack. Yep. What does the winner get? Well, we are looking into talking. We're talking with some of our sponsors at the moment, mate. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, it ain't going to be no little prize. <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be well worth your time. But you're not getting getting all that gear for nothing. You're going to have to get off your bum and make an effort and give us a really good. So we want a good. Tour. We could probably end up doing an, an, almost a whole show yep. on your tour yep. if you come up with the right thing. So this is going to be one. Cracking. This is going to be one shit up prize, guys. I'm telling you now. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Well, it's going to be a ripper. We've been doing some talking, and yep. uh, it's worth it. But sit down, have a look, and what we'll do is, as they come in, we'll uh, we'll maybe go through them. Yep. And what we'll do then is, at the end, we'll have a uh, what. Top three, yep, and then maybe put it to the vote or something like that. No, no, it's just you and me. Just pick it, yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll, well we're going to put it to the vote, me and Paul. Yeah, <laughs> and the girls can have one vote too. Yep, between them. No. <laughs> <laughs> so get your entries in. Uh, you can send them to Hogs Cogs and Two Aussie Flogs at gmail dot com, uh, or you can uh, hand them to us. Or you can send them by carrier pigeon, whatever you like. Camel train. Camel train. Camel train. He's stuck on this bloody hat back, isn't he? All righty. Hey, you know, I was just going to tell you, too, we, I, I delivered a whole heap of merch uh, during the week, too. Yeah. So, guys, if you haven't got your, your merch, uh, your T-shirts and all that sort of stuff, remember, we've got yeah. patches, stubby holders, T-shirts, coffee cups, the whole box and dice. Stickers. Uh, stickers, yes. Um, uh, just Heaps hit us up. We actually are in the process of coming up with a new uh, design, new T-shirt, uh, which will be interesting. That will be interesting. Uh, That's going to be a... It'll be a limited edition. A very limited edition. Limited edition. So uh, we'll, it, we'll once, not announce that next once we get a draft yep, copy. Yep, yep. Once we see what it's going to look like. Yeah. 
but suffice to say, it's a ripper. It's a ripper t-shirt. Yeah. Um, so uh, stay tuned with that. And uh, remember, that will be a limited run. So basically, get your once we announce it, get your order in straight away yeah. because once they're gone, they're gone. Yep. Yeah. It's going, to be a, it's going to be an interesting one, mate. I like the idea that you've come up with for that one, so that should be good. Now, a bit of sad news, mate. Yeah. Last weekend, the girls from the Iron Maiden uh, Social Motorcycle Club, which is a group of girls, and I think there's only about seven or nine of them or something. They're basically a group of friends that get out and get get together. Now, they were uh, down somewhere on the Western High, I believe it was, and one of them came to grief. And then the three behind all collided with them as well. So we ended up with four riders down. Two, uh, all of them ended up in hospital, but mm. uh, two have already been released from what I've heard, and the other one should hopefully be going home uh, tomorrow. Yep. Uh, however, we do have one that's uh, in hospital in an induced coma, which is the girl that came down first. So just from the... The whole Fogs crew, mate, the uh, our thoughts are with the, uh, the Iron Maidens. Yes. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed that she uh, comes good, mate, because uh, that was a nasty one. And, and there were a lot of rumours about that it was caused by road condition and potholes. Uh, I've spoken with, you know, one of the girls from the Iron Maidens. I said, no, that wasn't the case. Yep. But our own Scrope actually ran into the remainder of the party on the way home. The, he was okay. going home... They're shaking up, mate. They're, they're going to be shaking up, as you do when you see something like that. So be careful out there, folks. Yep. And uh, best wishes to the Iron Maidens, eh? Uh, 100%. Now, mate. For the thousands at home, there's absolutely no one in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to grumble. Right, yeah. What's up? You got a grumble? No, I thought apparently you've got a grumble. Yes. Now, the other week you put up a thing on uh, the Facebook group Mm -hmm. about a, uh, and and it was initially I thought, oh, here's a good thing. The (laughs) RACV are uh, getting information, getting uh, doing a survey on the condition of Victorian roads. Well, we all know what the condition is, don't we? Yes, right. So don't know why you I figured that's all right, but you know, let's have a look at it. Well, I went into it, mate. Mm-hmm. What a load of crap. Yep. Basically, it's a map-based... Did you like that? Look at that. saw that on the yep, TV. Yep. Map-based <laughs> survey where you've got to basically plot their maps. I, um, why don't they just go to Snapsend Solve, mate, and get yeah. all the information? Yeah. My problem with this is, all right, we're finding out where all the holes are. Next week, there'll be another hole somewhere else. Next week, there'll be another hole somewhere else. The problem isn't... The individual holes. The problem is, is that they're freaking everywhere, and there is a problem in how we get them fixed. First of all, there's not enough funding for it, and second of all, when they are getting funded, they're not getting funded enough, so they're not getting repaired properly. And therefore, two weeks after they fix the bloody things, there's a, the holes back in the ground. So, what are we solving here? You know, this is the, uh, the the government that just says, "Oh, look, everything's fine. Look the other way." We're rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. Yep, That's all 100%, we're doing. Hundred percent, mate. That is all we're so doing. So what they have to do, mate, is they have to fix the the issue of funding, and they have to look at quality control. Because there is no freaking point in fixing a hole in the road that's going to be there again two weeks later. The other thing is too with, the, with, with this thing, like you, you, they're asking you to pinpoint each pothole. I mean. What a load of crap. Well, how, how are you going yeah. like, that, that... I hit one last week. Oh, I'll just drive back up the bloody Western Highway yeah, or mate. Melba Highway. How oh, shit. Mate, the Melba Highway has had a couple of air features done. I'll just... An update for those that are interested in the Melba Highway in Victoria. Um, but it's still crap. There's still, there's still, I think, three areas on it where they drop you down to 40 k's. On a major road. Well, even even on the Hume Hume Highway coming up on the going up to Rutherglen, yeah. we hit a, a hole, and it was where you know where the bridges join. Yes, mate. Yeah, yeah. that was spine shattering, wasn't Just it? Yes, bang! Yeah. Like what the hell? Yeah. And uh, you know that's a, that, that's a major freeway for yeah. Christ's sake, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it's the main road between Melbourne and bloody Sydney for Christ's sake. If yeah. they can't get that right, what hope they've got of getting no. the smaller roads right? But like, like you and I were talking before, the, the, the major issue is there is... Well, the, the state's broke. <laughs> they're, they're broke. They, 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 there's, and the moron's running it. There's projects... They couldn't run a stuff up. There's budget overruns everywhere, like everywhere. Mm. We're in more debt than 
Mm. And, and, and the debt's actually not coming down. So I don't know how they're actually going to fix these roads. I don't know I don't where know. they're going to get the funds from. Mm. Uh, aside from the Commonwealth maybe tipping in a, a truckload of money to try and uh, get out there, but they're not travelling that well themselves. So, yeah. um, you know, like I keep saying, there's, a, there's, a, there's an election coming up in is it November. Honest to God, if we don't get rid of these clowns, uh, <laughs> right. I, I don't know what else. I don't know what else has to happen for people to figure out that we're going backwards at a road of knots. Oh, Victoria's going backwards at a road of knots. Mate. Not, not only that, the, the roads. The, the, uh, Johnny Ackle put up something. There's actual trees growing out of the gaps <laughs> in the ro- is trees. A six foot tree in the middle of a road. Yeah, it, it's a well, tree. It's, it's just ridiculous. It's, mate. it's actually a gum tree. It's yeah. a eucalypt, right? Yeah. And they're not getting not getting cut off. There's graffiti as far as you can see, especially around Melbourne. It is everywhere. Yeah, Again, it looks like shit. It looks like shit, mm. right? Uh, you know, all these things need to be addressed, and they need to be addressed in a hurry. And I just can't see any of these ass clowns doing anything about uh, it. Well, mate, I don't know. I just, it's just, it's just shattering to sort of. You just don't see any improvement. No, nope. you know, it's not getting any better. No, and uh, you know. As they say, you know, every time I hear it on the news, oh, a car has had a broken tyre or a dented rim or something, you go, dude, for every dented rim, if a bike hits it, there's a, there's a possible fatality. It's not that. You know? like and that. it's a legal thing to do, yeah. is ride a motorcycle. So don't tell me it's all about, you know, oh, well, you pick it you know, because it's done. No, we're entitled as law-abiding you know, motorists on the motorcycles who pay to, who pay who registration pay and a, insurance a shitload of registration and TAC and insurance and, 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 and safety we're levies. We're entitled to be given us, you know, this government to give us a safe bloody, uh, you know, road. <laughs> and, uh, geez, mate, talk about falling down. But anyway, we've done this to death, mate. But, you know, just beguiles me, mate. Yep. Beguiles me. So that's my grumble. Uh, that's a that's, fair uh, that survey to me is a complete waste of freaking time. We all know it's there. Yep. No one's going to fill it out. I said, look, if they need all those details, why don't I just go straight to the Snaps and Solve company? They'll hand them to them free yeah. of charge. Yeah. I've got no doubt. Uh, they already provide them to, that, all that details to all the uh, municipal look. councils and that. So I don't, I don't see the... I don't, it's, I, it's just, you know, I, when I saw it, I go, okay. Then I had a look at it. It's just <laughs> bullshit. What is this? It's just a pointless <laughs> exercise, Mr. <laughs> RECV. Yep. So uh, there you go, mate. All right, it's been a big day. It's been, been a big week, mate. With a uh, big weekend, we've got a little trip we're going on tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But we'll save that for next show. Yes, yes. Because uh, it's a bit of a cannonball run. <laughs> Just me and the big fella. Yep. Leaving the uh, the girls at home this time. Hey, eh? they've had enough of us, mate. They've said bugger off you two for three days. It's a it's, it's a it's a big trip for three days too. <laughs> Jesus Christ, well, well, mate. We've got I've got something I need to trial. Yep. Yes. So we yep. will do that. We will do that, and we will talk about that next episode. So uh, Vic rallies, runs, and events, mate. What have we got on, mate? There's uh, there's five things occurring in the next fortnight which people might be interested in. So first of all, on the 19th of April, out at Calder Park, they've got Drag Racing Smackdown 2024. So uh, if you want to get your bike in there and uh, have a bit of a run, that's the place to do it. Yep. All right. And we've we, we've, we've seen, mate. I tell you what, you need a set to get on the on the track and do that. So that's on uh, from five o'clock on April nine, Friday, April 19th. Uh, April 21st, Sunday, April 21st, we've got the uh, ORV end of season finale ride, which is going from uh, ORV's, uh, uh, what do they call themselves, a riders group or something? ORV, I can't, not sure what that actually stands for, mate, but anyway, so they're leaving on uh, at 10 o'clock from the Trestle Bridge up in Belgrave. At, so they're meeting there at 9.30, leaving at 10, and they're going to head uh, on the Mount Dandenong Tourist Road, Hillsville, and finishing up at Diamond Creek Hotel for a cheeky pint. Nothing better than a cheeky pint. Make it a light, boys, you're right. Yes, yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so that sounds like it'll be a whole lot of fun. So if you've got no, no one to ride with on Sunday the 21st, get out with those guys. Uh, Thursday, the 25th Anzac Day. 
All right, Anzac Day. Got a ride leaving from BP Calder Park, and it's being uh, run by Lee's Photography now. Great Lee. bike. Great he was bloke. at Rutherglen. He was at Rutherglen, mate. He took more snaps than a bloody busload of uh, Japanese tourists. Yep. He was doing really well. So that one's leaving uh, there. Kickstand's up at 11, and a meeting in the truck parking lot. And they're going to go up to Mount Macedon Memorial Cross for a minute silence, and then back down the mountain and on to Keeler Park Hotel. Oh, really? Not a bad Is day. Is it Keeler out. Hotel or Keeler Park Hotel? Keeler, it says Keeler Park. Wait a second. Keeler Park Hotel, it says. Keeler Park Hotel, okay. Yeah. Yep. So uh, that's a good one for Anzac Day. Yep. Now, another event that's on is uh, a guy by the name of Luke sent it in to me. Uh, it is the um, uh, it is the Vietnam Veterans um, and uh, Vietnam Veterans and Veterans MC Anzac Day Service, 25th of April. Uh, it's the dawn service. Um, it commences at 6 a.m. sharp. Follow later in the day with a mid-morning service that will commence at 11 a.m. The service will include a, uh, a party uh, provided by the 22nd Engineer Regiment. Regiment, guest speakers, wreath laying uh, ceremony and last post ceremony. Um, at the conclusion of the service, you're welcome to join us for light refreshments at the clubhouse grounds where you can meet the veterans and their family. So that's on. Uh, that's at one ninety nine Princess Princess Highway. Yeah, Long Worry, Long Worry North. Long Worry. So they they run a, a, a number of things up there, mate. And yep. uh, they have a bike show every year, and uh, they do Anzac Day. And uh, from what I've heard, mate, they do Anzac Day really well. Yep. So you might have to get up early to get there for the six o'clock one. Yep. But uh, I reckon it'd be well and truly worth it, Absolutely. mate. So Absolutely. So get along there, and there's this, you know. Nothing better than a nice early morning uh, ride, mate, and uh, nothing better than doing it heading to an Anzac Day parade, mate, of some kind. So if you can't make it to theirs, make it to someone's. Yep, yeah. we, we did. We did it last year up in Rutherglen, didn't we? Yeah, it was yeah, very good. Yeah, good fun. Yeah. Um, now, set the April twenty seventh. We have the Rolling Dice Ride, which is being run by Meningitis Centre Australia in memory of Andrew Douglas Sims. Now, that's Lear, That's 9am meet at the Frankston Pier, 10am stands up, and wear purple if you can. Mm-hmm. So that's a good uh, cherry ride. Got prizes for the three highest rollers, so obviously a rolling dice ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, best bike and best dressed. And they'll have raffle tickets for sale too, so that's, that's for a great cause. And then another one, uh, 27th, and 28th of April, this is a good one, mate, the BSA Motorcycle Association of Victoria is running the All-British Rally oh, cool. out at the old Newstead Race Course. Maybe Hoggy could get along with that one. Oh, right. Well, if he left now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, Sorry Hoggy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 2024 sees the BSA Motorcycle Owners of Victoria organise the 46th Annual British Rally, Best of British Motorcycles in the Known Universe. That's a fairly big call. <laughs> that seems all right. Saturday night there's a few good ones. There's a few good ones down at uh, the Motorcycle Mecca in New Zealand. Yeah, one or, one or two, mate. <laughs> uh, so it's at the Newstead Recreation and Racecourse Reserve in central Victoria. So, nice uh, town. Matt is a ripper, mate. So... If you're if you're up that way or want to get up that way, get along. It's on all weekend, so that that would be a fun one to get to, mate. We'll have to look at what's going on on the calendar there. I think twenty mm-hmm. seventh and twenty eighth. What's that? A couple of weeks away. Okay, and that's it for rallies, runs, and events, mate. Now talking of events, yeah. Uh, Johnny Aqua put us on to something during the week, and then you oh, you started watching, and you told me you have to watch this, mate. This. If you ride Harleys and if you like racing, could there be anything better than bagger racing? Now, <laughs> I remember when bagger racing started, mm-hmm. right? Bagger racing started for oh, you kidding, aren't you, right? My whole mind has been changed, all right? King of the baggers in America. You've got Kyle Wyman and his brother... Um, Travis. Travis, riding for uh, the main Harley-Davidson team over there now. In the first season which is basically one episode on the Harley Davidson YouTube channel. It goes through, I think it's the 2022 season. Mm -hmm. All right, Cole Wyman had won, was the champion from 2021. 
2022 season. That goes for about an hour and 20 minutes and gives you a, a lot of background on the two two brothers and all the, all the other. It basically concentrates on the Harley Davidson team, funnily enough, because it's on the Harley Davidson <laughs> YouTube channel. Not a lot of mention of the Indians. Polaris team. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one has just started, all right, and it is a bloody ripper. So it's called Push the Limit. Yep. Season two is now up, the first episode of it. So they go, oh, obviously, because there's more... I mean, the first time they ran, ran this series, there was only three, three rounds. Then there was six rounds, and I think now they're up to eight rounds. And it's getting really interesting. I saw the Harley Davidson official uh, baggers yep. at Sturgis when I was at Black Hills Harley. Oh, they are wicked-looking units, mate. There's not much normal about them. They, they don't look like mine in your road. No, 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 no. But they are road glides mm-hmm. because, you know, they're the fastest <laughs> of the baggers. So season two's just started. First episode out, I think it goes for about half an hour or something like that, and the next episode of that should be out hopefully really soon because it's, that's concentrating on last year's season. It's done in the style of, I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, Drive to Survive, which is a, a Formula One sort of, it's, it's done in that mm. sort of style, but, mate, really, really well done, well shot. It is. It is. Really it, professional. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic to watch it. Lots of interviews and lots of going on behind the scenes and lots you of know, stuff it, and the rivalry. It, it and just shows, too, that, that you know, you just being the best rider alone isn't enough. No. Because you've got to have the best team behind. You've got to have the best mechanics. Your bike's got to be perfect. You know, and there are some heartbreaking moments in those series, mate. Yeah. But I watched it, as I said, with the target. And I put, you know, John put it up on, on, on the Facebook group or whatever it was. Yep. And uh, I said, well, we'll have a look at that. Well, that was it. After 10 minutes, we were, we, we were up until about 1 in the morning. <laughs> but we put it on really late, thinking this thing will only go for a minute. Well, we watched the first one which was actually, we watched season two, the yep. first episode first. I said, looked at her and she goes, season one. <laughs> and off we went and we put season one on and we watched that. So, uh, I mean, you know, I had to be up early to be retired. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so, guys, if you haven't seen it, Yeah, we'll get put a link. It. I'll yeah. put a link to both of the, episode, yeah. both the episodes. That watch the season one first. Yes, definitely watch season one first. I wish I had, but it, it really didn't make a lot of difference, but you might as well watch it in there. But it is really, order. really good. Absolutely ripper, mate. And if you, as I said... It was, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. I would love for them to do it like I keep saying, at Bathurst. Oh, it would be yeah. absolutely sensational. You imagine, you imagine the baggage coming down the corkscrew, oh. mate. Oh, oh, oh. Mate, that would be so You would have to have underpants like a TARDIS. Yeah, I, I would <laughs> love to see them bring it to Australia. Or, just, or, yeah. or, or, or maybe the Aussie um, dealership stuff, run a, yeah. run a season. I reckon it would be fantastic. Well, we, mate, we're going to be heading down to Geelong next week. Why don't we have a chat with Cole? Cole, yeah. <laughs> whip a bagger up, Cole. <laughs> don't, don't tempt him. <laughs> Mate, that's it for today. That's it. Well, well, well look, like I said, but, but Brother Green Rumble was fantastic. It's been a been another great week. Yeah. Um, get on those King of the Baggers. It's, it is fantastic to watch. Yeah. Uh, we highly, highly recommend it. I reckon you'll love it. Yeah. Um, but that's it from me. That's it from me. That's it from Hogs. Cogs. And two Aussie Flogs. Ciao.